Welcome back to Noomber Math, and a big shout out for this review goes out to the Wizard of Tozy himself. Yes, boys and girls, Mr. Fantozy. This was his wonderful work that I had simply asked if I could make a video and utilize with my class as well. So big shout out. Thank you so much, Mr. Fantozy. Greatly appreciated. All right, for number one. For each letter A through C, A, B, C, state if the function has a minimum or a maximum. All right, again, quadratic functions. Here we go. Everything in math is just three steps. Identify, recognize, and sequence. Well, let's do some identifying. Okay, so the coefficient here of x squared is the number 2. That is also known as our a value. But let's go ahead and label just as it's asked us to. All right, and that positive 6, the coefficient of x, yes, that is your b value. And with a being positive, well, all right, when a equals positive, and yes, that 2 above there is positive, our parabola will smile like a positive person, and that will create a minimum. All right, let's go ahead and try B. G of X equals 4X squared plus 1,000. And again, we have a coefficient of X squared. That coefficient of X squared is wonderful job, the number 4. And a lot of this review will be simply in black and white, as by now our comfortability to identify has definitely skyrocketed. All right, wonderful Plus 1,000, oh my goodness, a constant, a number that stands by itself. I'm just going to go ahead and underline and call that the C value. All right, but again, our A is positive, giving us a smiled parabola that's positive, giving us a minimum. Let's go over to C. H of T equals negative 2T squared plus 15. Again, what is our A value, guys? Wonderful job. And our, no, not B, but C value is 15. Great job. What do we notice? Something slightly different? Oh, my goodness. A equals negative 2. And when we have that negative representation right there for our A value, yes, our parabola will frown. That will also give us a maximum function. Okay, so if you have a question that says... Um, Find the answer choice that does not provide a minimum. Well, guess what? You'd go for the maximum. All right, for number two, what is the y-intercept for the function f of x equals 4x squared plus 10x minus 5? Again, let's identify. Let's label. Our 4 is our a value. Our positive plus 10 is our b. And our minus negative 5 will be your c value. But in order to get the y-intercept, all right, it's simple. Ooh, that looks so bad. All right, I know I'm not the best artist, but our y-intercept equals zero and our c-value. All right, so our y-intercept is simply zero followed by what is our c-value? Yes, negative five. Go ahead and plop that right in. That is your simply your answer. All right, for number three or number six, depending on what quiz you might be working on, what is the vertex of the function? G of x equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 1. This time it's looking for the vertex. Well, let's go ahead and identify. All right, we have our a value, our b value, and our c value. All right, so when it's looking for the vertex, first thing we need to find is the axis of symmetry, the x value of the vertex. And in order to find that, we will use the formula x equals negative b, sorry, that's a little small, let me zoom in, over 2a, just like it has upstairs um, when we first started this, okay? So you can simply take the opposite of your b value if you understand that that negative b is equal to negative 1 times b, all right? So if we did negative 1 times 8, yes, we would simply get negative 8, all right, so we can put that right there. And then on the bottom, if we know that 2a is equal to 2 times a, well, let's do 2 times our a value. So here we will do 2 times, oh my goodness, simple. Our a value is a 2, and 2 times 2 equals 4. 
Now, because of our fraction here, we will simply divide. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. And that, my friends, is your x value of your vertex. Now, I am going to highlight that in orange here. Um, just so you can see exactly how it plugs in when we find our y value. All right, so now we can simply plug in our x value of negative 2 into our function of 2x squared plus 8x plus 1. Now, for every time, and yes, there will be two times that you see that x, we are simply just going to wrap that negative 2 in parentheses and continue to write our function and utilize our calculator to assist us. All right, so let's go through it. So it's the number two that's going to start. I'm just going to put that there. Oh my goodness, there's that X. And what do we do with that X? Yes, I will do it in orange. We will wrap that negative two in parentheses, but then our function says to square it. So no big deal, we're just writing it out. Um, and then what does it say? Plus eight, okay, so plus eight. Oh my goodness, there's our X again. All right, let's go ahead and wrap that negative two in parentheses. I didn't like the way that two looked. And then just finish writing the function of plus one. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and put that into our calculator here. And we're just going to put in two, open that parenthesis. All right, negative is right here. Don't get that confused with subtraction. Negative two, close it. All right, to square it, just simply hit x squared right here. Boom, done. Plus eight, open another parenthesis, negative two, one more time, close that again, plus one, hit enter, and we get negative seven. Wonderful. Making our vertex negative two and negative seven. And let me just write that out for us as a set of coordinates. And that right there would be your answer. All right, now for number four, or depending on the quiz, it could be number five. What's the axis of symmetry for the function p of x equals x squared plus 7x plus 10? Well, when it's asking for the axis of symmetry, we're just solving for the x value like we did above. So we're going to apply that exact same formula here. All right, so I'm just going to put, I'll underline our axis of symmetry. And I do believe by now we do know that that's the x value of our vertex, but I will write that in there for some of our first time viewers. All right, x value of vertex. So let's simply go ahead and identify what is our a value here? Yes, great job, because there's an imaginary one right there. Thank you. All right, our b value is plus seven, and our plus 10 is our c, our constant wonderful. All right, and we're just looking for the x value of the vertex this time. And again, we'll just write it out. x equals negative b over 2a. And again, the negative b just means negative 1 times b. So we'll do negative 1 times our b value of 7, giving us negative 7. All right, so we're simply just flipping the sign of our b value, or the opposite of it. And then we're doing 2 times our a value. Well, what did we identify as our a value? Yes, simply a one. So two times one is just two. All right, negative seven divided by two equals negative 3.5. Go ahead and circle your answer. All right, so for number five, this can also be used for numbers 10 and 11, depending on the quiz you're working on. But Fill in the following information for the function f of x equals negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. All right, well, does this graph have a minimum or a maximum? All right, before we begin, yes, I know I love to identify. I'm a little crazy about it. We have our a value, our b value, and our c value. But the more you get comfortable with identifying, all right, practice builds proficiency. All right, repetition builds retention. Now, the next time you see this, maybe on an SAT, you will recognize exactly what to do. All right, so does this function or does this graph have a minimum or a maximum? Well, taking a look, what's our A value? Oh, great job. Yes, our A value is negative 2. And when our A value is negative, our parabola will frown, giving us a maximum 
All right, so let's go ahead and circle that bad boy. What else can we answer that's real quick? Well, the advantage to getting a quadratic function here in standard form is that we can easily find the y-intercept because the y-intercept, again, right here, all right, let's just do y-int equals zero and then c. Well, so I know my y-intercept then will be a zero here, and then let's find our c value of, yes, plus 5 or positive 5. Perfect. Done. All right. Axis of symmetry and vertex. Well, to find the vertex, we have to get the axis of symmetry. So why don't we do that? All right. So right next to this, I'm just going to put x equals. And again, I'll write out the formula for us so we have it and we build that comfortability. All right. So if negative b just tells you to do negative 1, times b, well, negative 1 times negative 8 gives us a positive 8, and we'll set that over 2 times a, and if our a value is negative 2, we will do 2 times negative 2, which gives us negative 4, and when we divide that, yes, it equals negative 2. Great job, all right? So that right there is your axis of symmetry. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that in over here x equals negative 2. Great job. Wonderful work. All right. And then I'll just simply for our f of x equals or our y equals because f of x is y. Y is f of x. All right. Einhorn is Finkel. Finkel is Einhorn. All right. We are simply just copying down the function as it tells us to. Negative 2. All right. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Great job. We will wrap a negative two in parentheses. Amazing work. Who said that? Who shouted it? Great job. Thank you so much. You are incredible. All right. Now, don't get this confused. That is a minus eight. And then again, we have an X. And again, yes, we will wrap that negative two in parentheses and we will continue to write our function of plus five. There's our plus. Let's add the five. Let's do an equals and let's pull our calculator in. So we will do negative two, open parenthesis, negative two, close, x squared, boom, minus eight, open parenthesis, negative two, close parenthesis, plus five, hit enter, and we get, ooh, my old baseball number, 13. Go ahead and circle that. Making your vertex negative two and 13. All right. Now, we want to sketch this out. All right. So no big deal. We're just going to simply plot some points. All right. Vertex is negative 2 and 13. So let's go. Start at 0, 0 here. And if it's negative 2, well, we go to the left 2. All right. And then it was a positive 13. Is that correct? Sorry. I just had to check that one more time. Yes, it is. Oh, my goodness. We're off the screen. But what we're going to do... All right, I'm just going to plot it right here and pretend that's our 13. Let me do that in red just so you guys can see it. We are going to pretend that is 13. All right, so we will go from negative 2 up to that 13. I'll plot this in brown. All right, we're just imagining that's 13. All right, what else can we plot? Yes, we can plot the y-intercept of 0, 5. So let's go ahead and again, 0, 0. If it's 0, well, it doesn't go right or left. It simply goes up into the positives of plus 5. All right, and now we know that our vertex, well, if it's frowning, you can pretty much kind of connect the dots in a way, right? And then do the exact same. If you wanted to mirror it, well, 1, 2, I could go 1, 2 and do somewhat of a mirror image here because that is our axis of symmetry, and boom. All right, so your graph will look ballpark roughly something like that. All right, so feel free to use this for numbers 10 and 11 or number 5, depending the quiz you will be taking. All right, vertex form. All right, f of x equals a. Ooh, okay, a little different here. x minus h square at plus k, where h and k is the vertex. Wonderful. Well, let's just go ahead and label. I love to identify and label. All right. What's that? Ooh, our A value, great job, is going to be that imaginary one. Excellent work. And our B value will be our coefficient of X. Now, our A here is positive, so our parabola 
will then smile like a positive person. Sometimes myself is Noomber. Noomber is Richards. Richards is Noomber. All right, that will give us a minimum function. And let's go over to B. G of X equals negative 4. Open up those parentheses of X plus 2. Let's close. Let's square plus 10. And let's identify. All right, so... The function may come in a different form, but the game remains the same. All right, a couple of players have changed, but our negative 4, yes, in front of the parentheses, is our A value. Now, by a couple of players changing, our plus 2, yes, that is our H value. Let's get comfortable with it. And then our plus 10 is our K value. Now, in all reality, yes, we only need to find the A if we want to find the minimum or maximum, but I love that right now we are writing it out and we're working it through and we're identifying, we're labeling, we're building that practice. All right, so our A value is a negative four. Negative people are going to frown because they're so miserable all the time. And that gives us a max function. And let's go over here. Let's try it one more time. The retired Dirk Nowitzki will be our A value, our negative 1 will be our H value, and negative 5 will give us our K value. And just because simply that A is positive, yes, and after he beat LeBron in the finals, he was smiling just like our parabola, and that gives us a minimum congrats to Dirk on that championship. All right, so for number 7, I kind of changed it up a little bit for my crew. Um, what is the shift in the vertex of the function f of x equals, ooh, just x minus 5, okay? So we're just looking for the shift. Now, our shift here, let me write it out for us. Our shift, let me move this down actually too. So I really want to label and just so you guys can see it. All right, is going to e equal negative h, and then k. All right, now we have to know one thing. Again, just like our negative b in the axis of symmetry was negative 1 times b, well, negative h is simply just negative 1 times h. So we're just flipping the sign. Now, in front, we would have our a value, okay? Now, for the shift here, yes, that is our h. All right, and then our K, well, when there's nobody home, all right, so let's get rid of that plus zero, nobody home, we don't have a K value. Oh my goodness, yes, what's our shift going to equal? Well, if we're going to do negative one times H, so if we did negative one times negative five, that would give us a positive five, and K stays the same anyways, but there is no K, so it's simply just five and zero. Wonderful. All right, so number eight, what's the axis of symmetry for the function p of x equals negative x minus 1 squared plus 20? Well, let's just simply go ahead and find the vertex. And when we're given the quadratic function in vertex form, all right, if we're going from the function to a shift or the function to the vertex, that h is just going to flip-flop, all right? So let's simply identify to kick off. Yes, our A value is negative 1. Great job. Our H value is negative 1. Great work. And our plus 20 is our K value. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to put vertex equals for us. And I'm going to do negative H and then K. All right. Now, let's take a look. So we would have, for our vertex... Axis of symmetry would be your opposite H right there. All right. So it's negative 1 times H. So negative 1 times, yes, negative 1 gives us simply a positive 1. And are we beginning to build that strength of why we flip? Great job. All right. Ooh, and our K value is 20. So our X equals 1 for your axis of symmetry. I'm going to get rid of that circle just for the next one. All right, so for number nine, or what could be number eight on yours, if you're with Mr. Richards on this quiz, all right, or Noomber himself, given f of x equals x squared, what is the shift in the vertex of the graph? 
f of x equals f of x plus 6. All right, so just like our vertex equals, and just like we did earlier, well, our shift equals the exact same. Okay, let's see, opposite or flip of h, negative, negative h, and then k, and because there's no negative in front of k, well, guess what? It's just 1 times k, so that's why it doesn't change. That's your reasoning behind it. All right, well, let's take a look. Oh, my goodness. Well, if our h value is always in parentheses, well, there's nothing in parentheses there, but our k value is on the outside here, making our k value here as well. All right, so I'm just going to simply underline our plus 6, and I'm going to label that our k value. Now, our shift then, well, if there's no h given to us, there's nothing we can do because there's nobody home. We just put a zero there. And if our k value simply stays the same, once we've identified it as a plus 6 or positive 6, well, guess what? That's your answer. Zero and six. All right, so number 10, given f of x equals x squared, what is the shift in the vertex of the graph? f of x equals f. Ooh, open those up, x minus 2 plus 3. And again, all right, we're given kind of like this shift here. We need to write the vertex. So when we're given that shift and we need to write the vertex, yes, it's the same type of stuff. All right, so our shift is going to equal opposite h or negative h and then k. All right, so let's identify. All right, so we have a one ball falling there for our a value. Our negative 2 is our h and our plus 3 is our k. So the shift is going to equal, yes, negative 1 times h. So negative 1 times negative 2, and again, just giving us that flip, gives us a positive 2, and k stays the same, which is plus 3. We don't need to write the plus. Go ahead and circle your shift. All right, for number 11, or potentially number 9, again, if you're quizzing with me, write an equation of a parabola, f of x equals x squared, that is translated four units right and two units up. All right, here's what I like to do. All right, this is something the way that my brain processes this. I see this as, oh my goodness, they're giving me a shift. And I'm simply just going to put this shift right down. And I'm just going to write it down as almost like a pair of coordinates here. All right, I'm just going to divide it here by four units right and two units up. Now, I'm going to highlight this in blue. And if we go four units right, well, we're just simply going plus four to the right and the positives. And if we go two units up here, well, we're just going plus two into the positives. All right, so we have our shift now just given to us, correct? Wonderful. So now we know what the shift equals and we need to write the function. All right, so again, we're gonna write the equation. So my bad on that. So let's just do f of x equals because that's how your quiz has it. But again, f of x is y, y is f of x. All right, so if that equals A, open your parentheses, and it's going to do, our formula is going to look like this, X minus H, close it, square it, plus K. All right, so again, let's just take a look here. Well, your imaginary, or F of X equals X squared, well, that's your A value, which is 1. So we can just put F of X equals. We don't need to write the one. If you're more comfortable putting it in, feel free. I'm sure your teacher's not going to mind too much, but if you're taking a standardized test and we have to circle a response, understand that that one will not be there. All right, so if we have to do negative one times h, oh my goodness, you forgot to label. I'm so sorry about that, guys. Whoa, thank you for reminding me. Let's do our x. And so that's negative 1 times h. Well, negative 1 times 4 simply becomes, yes, negative 4. All right, this will be one of the few times I do apply the color. And if our k stays the same because it's just plus k, um, our k value is 2, and that's a positive 2, so we will write plus 2. All right, you can go ahead and simply circle your answer. All right, so for number 12, write an equation of a parabola f of x equals x squared that is translated three units left and one unit down. Again, it wants us to write that occasion, equation. I like to take those words first and just go boom, boom. 
And then right below, I know this is how my mind processes it. I split because of the and, but let me go ahead and highlight for us. Three units left. Well, I know if I'm going zero, zero, and I go left three, well, I'm going to hit negative three. So I'm just going to put negative three. Let me get back to my pen here. All right. And then we are going to go one unit down. Well, if I'm going down one unit, so if I'm going left three and then down one, again, I'm going into the negatives, hitting negative one. So that will be minus one. All right. But now we need to write the equation. And again, we will set up the formula for us of f of x equals, and then a, open your parenthesis, x minus h squared plus k. All right. So let's write it out. F of x equals, and again, sorry about the labeling on the a, that imaginary one there. All right. So we don't have to write that one. We can just simply open the parenthesis and let's do x. And if it's telling us to do negative one times h because of that negative h, well, negative one times negative three then becomes, yes, we're simply flipping the plus three. All right. So let's just say if we're given a shift, we have to flip into the function. And if we're giving a function, we have to flip into the shift or the vertex. All right, let's close that down. Let's square it. And then our plus K, well, it's plus K, but we're given negative one. K stays the same. So we're just going to put minus one. All right, it wants us to sketch the parabola after translating it. Well, Let's just take a look. So translated negative three and negative one. So let's just go ahead and plot that point. Then we're going to go to the left three and we are going to go down one. Now, what do we know about that A value? Yes, there's an imaginary positive one there. All right, so let's do our best to go boom. Wait, hold on. Love to do the Y intercept. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that right now no let's do negative three negative one and let's roll with it let's just do our smile for our a sorry i forgot we're in vertex form here and that still doesn't look that good as i'm just trying to do a simple kind of smile type of thing and guys we're ballparking it's rough sketching all right it doesn't need to necessarily be perfect it does need to smile or frown but your vertex plotted point should definitely be Spot on. All right, moving forward. Factored form f of x equals a and then x minus p, x minus t. All right, for each letter a through c, if the function has a minimum or a maximum here. All right, well, let's just go ahead and work through it. All right, we're going to be looking for the a value here. Again, we have our a value. Is that a positive or negative? Yes, that a is positive. Okay, so what is our function going to do? Yes, it's going to smile, and that will give us a minimum. All right, so let's just go ahead, and again, let's label that a value. For these ones, we have a negative 3. And yes, when that's negative, negative people frowning all the time, creating that maximum negativity. Ugh, I don't like it. I can't stand it. And let's go ahead and label that one more time. Again, we will be frowning. Frown upon us, bringing the misery. All right, giving us our max function. Now, for number 14, determine the x-intercepts of the following function. g of x equals negative 2, x plus 10, x minus 5. All right, so here's what we're going to do. All right, we can simply pull both of these out. I'll give you the long version here. All right, we will write this. We will set our y equal to 0. So we will do x plus 10 equals 0. And we just solve for x, all right? Um, how do we get x by itself? Well, it's hanging out with plus 10, and we simply just subtract 10. But what we do to one side of the equation, yes, we do to the other. All right, giving us, bring down your x, cancel those bad boys out. Um, 0 minus 10 gives us that negative 10. All right, so your, four, your first x-intercept is simply, eh, let me write underneath, negative 10, and then 0. Because we know that x equals negative 10, and x, y 
x, y. So x goes to the negative 10, and we set y equal to 0, so that's why that is there. Now, for this one, a little shortcut, all right? I'm simply going to write it. What did we notice? This plus 10 simply just became a negative 10, right? And you throw it in the x spot. So that's all we're going to do. All right, I'm simply just going to write it here for us. All right, that negative 5 becomes a positive 5 and then a 0. And then if you're taking notes, what I want you to do is just draw a little arrow there and just put flip sign. And that's truly all you need to do to find that x-intercept there. You're setting y equal to 0. All right, so great job there. 15, determine the x-intercepts of the following function, h of x equals x minus 3x plus 5, and use the x-intercepts and the value of the a term to draw a rough sketch. Beautiful. So what do we know here? Let's take the shortcut. All right, so our x-intercept here becomes, yes, not, not negative 3, 0, but 3, 0. All right. Again, you're taking this negative 3 here, and you're just simply flipping it to a positive because we set y equal to 0, and that just becomes 3, 0. So if we go to our graph, let's plot that point. We have 1, 2, 3, and if it's 0, it does not go up. It does not go down. It just stays at 3 along that x-axis. Great job. All right, let's do the next one. We'll highlight that in red. So again, yes, we are using color, very few, but just to really just give you more of that identification piece as I talk through this via the video. All right, so if we have that x plus 5, that means our x will be, yes, great job, negative 5, and our y is simply 0 because we're always setting y equal to 0. All right, so we will start at 0, 0, and we will go one, two, three, four, five to the left. And we know that it does not go up or down. So let's go ahead and boom, do that. And here we go again. Well, what's our function here? Yes, we have that A value. All right, so it's going to look something like this maybe. And it's going to have that big bright smile because our A value is a positive one. And go ahead and move on to your next one. For number 16, determine the x-intercepts of the following function. g of x equals negative 2, x minus 1, x plus 4. And use the x-intercepts and the value of the a term to draw a rough sketch. And again, here we go, guys. Let's simply highlight our x minus 1. Let's write our x-intercepts. And you guys are going way too fast for me, but I will write the 1, 0. That doesn't look too good. Let me zoom in a little further. All right, we're going to have to put that zero over that y, and then again, we will switch to red. And if we're given x plus four, yes, thank you. You guys are amazing, negative four and zero. Let's go ahead and plot both of those points. We'll start with the blue. We have our one zero, so if we start at zero, zero, we just go to the right one, plot that point, and then we have our negative four, zero. So again, if we start at zero, zero, we just go to the left four of one, two, three, four, stop, and plot that point. Ooh, what's our A value this time? Great job recognizing. I almost went with a smile. All right, we're going to have that frown. All right, so our parabola is going to look something similar to that. And that's what your sketch would look like. And that wraps the review. Let's go. Let's dominate. Let's crush. And let's all get A's. Let's go.